The process of negation and assertion. Why we give more importance and weightage to negation than assertion? For assertion, we use the indicative de definitions of Brahman, which we have seen already. All the indicative, you know, de definitions, whatever he has given earlier, Nirguno, Nishkriyo, Nityam, Anantam, etc. So we use those things for us to assert what is the truth. But as on date, as we are today, first we need to negate what is unreal. And the problem is, what is, is that you consider to be real and what is it that you consider to be unreal? Right. This is the issue here. The problem is the courage to develop, to challenge what you believe to be real and what you believe to be unreal. That is the process of negation. The starting point. From where you start negation, sir. Don't go on saying, world is unreal, world is unreal, world is unreal and all that, please. That, that way it will not help. World is unreal, God is real. That's not what is meant here. What is meant here is, first, how stubbornly you hold on to a portion, something to be most valuable, high priority. Right. What is your priority? Now you can, at any point of time, you can do either this or that. Correct. Now you have to make a choice. You can't do both. Like you have a choice of attending a class and going for a party. Now, which one you are going to choose? Don't tell me. I will take my mo mo mobile phone and watch your uh, class sitting in the party. Yeah. This, is the, this is the issue now. You tell people, no, what, which one you will make a choice now? Yes, sir. Best thing, you know what? I will go to the party, open the Zoom call, Zoom meeting, I'll attend from there. You can be either here or there. Now, the question is, where you are choosing to be? On what basis you are making that choice? Which means, this is of a higher importance than that, isn't it? It's as simple as that. You say, I can't be in both places. So, this is more important than this. Or whatever these people call it as important and urgent. You know, urgent, remember, urgency means it is a medical requirement. That's called urgent. Or urgently I have to go. Nature's call, you go like that. Right. Those things is what we refer as urgent. Rest of it, whatever you call as urgent, we do, is not considered as urgent actually. Okay. Depends on what is your priority. The question is, on what basis do you have the courage 
to challenge whatever you have considering as priority. Okay, you say that, sir, I'm going to take your Vedanta classes as priority. Are you happy? Instead of going to party, I'll come to your class. Are you happy now? Say, I don't care whether you come or you don't come. The question is, on what basis? Suppose if you come to a conclusion that what you are choosing is not a priority, is not real, is not valuable, or it is of a less valuable, do you have the courage to say no to that? That is the question first. So the whole thing starts with what? It starts with your courage to question the false, to challenge the false is the first thing. Because when you are already having so much, when your mind is filled with so much you believe to be real already, right? Your notion of reality is more important than the reality to you. Isn't it? My idea of truth is of a greater value than the truth itself. When you already know this is real, this is unreal, this is priority, this is not priority, you are not available for investigation. So first thing required is to make you available for investigation. What is that process? That process is what is referred to as negation. But if you only go on negating, you will land up in cynicism and negativity, emptiness. There's no meaning to life, sir. Hmm? What is in money? You will say, what is in money? What is in wealth? I said, transfer all that to my account. Then no. Then don't say there is no value for, for wealth. You know, it is absurd to say that. There is zero value for wealth means you are ignorant. Same way, you are ignorant as much as a person who claims in life, wealth is the most important aspect. That is also wrong. If you say the man who claims wealth is, is all important, if he is wrong, you are also wrong, saying wealth is of no importance. Now what you should negate and what you should assert? Now, without you going through this process of negation, directly if you go into this assertion part, is what is known as borrowed knowledge. I was referring to it in the last class. What is this borrowed knowledge? Borrowed knowledge means knowledge which is not yours, authentic, opposite of authentic knowledge. What is authentic knowledge? Authentic knowledge is that which is, is coming out of your investigation, your understanding, where you have questioned, where you have probed, investigated into what you are doing. All of us are excellent in, very eloquent in analyzing where all people go wrong. Ask them, say, okay, you have told, where all that follows wrong. Okay, now tell me, where all he is correct? Hmm? What are all the things he, he is good at? That is called a fair assessment, right? Now the, the, the ability in you 
to see what is a flaw, what is the inadequacy, where the other person is going wrong, is too obvious vis-a-vis -vis what is right in that person. You have to think a lot. That means you are living a life of borrowed knowledge. You have not done any investigation. If you have done the investigation, you would have seen both sides. So start that investigation. When you start that investigation, where will you start your investigation? Investigation will always start from the world. What you are seeking. What are you going up after? Why you are seeking outside, external? Because you know only external world. You know only the world. So you start investigating into the nature of the world. When you start probing into the nature of the world, what you seek in the world, what you think has a greater value in the world, one part of the world is of greater importance, other part of the world is not so important. All that, when you see, you realize that you seek one, you detest the other. You want one person, you don't want another person. In that one person also, you like one part of him, you don't like another part of him. Isn't it? And the same thing you do, you turn introvert, the first thing you encounter in your life, in your personality is the body. And again you do the same thing, you divide that also into two. One part of the body is holy, Another part of the body is unholy, isn't it? One part is good part, another part is bad part. You don't see even your body also as one full. I'm not saying you should not, okay? You know, in custom, this is. It is custom when you go to a temple, when they give tirtham, you, you take your right hand. In fact, you are not supposed to take your right hand. You are supposed to take both the hands. Right hand on top, left hand below, you take like that. That is the way you are supposed to take the prasad. You don't just extend your, you know, one hand. They give either, either it is the, either it is the Tirtha Prasada or they give uh, Laddu or they give, you know, Vibhuti, ashes, anything they give. When prasad is given, you are supposed to extend both the hands. Not just one hand. Right hand is what you should give. And this fellow says, why right hand? Ishwaran has told in the class, you know what? Both hands are holy. Therefore, what I'm going to do? Stretch my left hand. Wait, one fellow is doing. The mother was telling me. Of course, the mother did do what I advised. I said, sir, it looks very embarrassing for me. I said, that man, that boy is giving me this logic. What to, what to tell him? I said, buy a bedpan and serve sambar to him tomorrow. From bedpan, you serve sambar. I watched it, you tell him. Right. He said, I said, that's what he is saying, no. According to him, the logic is what? And then he puts a blame on me. He says, each or only said both are same. Remember, there are two different things in life. One is understanding. Another thing is action. We are discussing about understanding here. Not what you do. For explaining certain facets, we take what you are doing as an example. Remember that. Artavada that is. Technically, we call it as Artavada. That's not what is directly meant. What is this? Na? You have a tendency to divide. That is the essential point. What is that? The moment you divide, there is no option you have 
to claim one aspect is appreciated, another aspect is not appreciated. These two things will come. One aspect you will start liking, another aspect you will start detesting. You will not be liking. That division starts creating. Once that division starts created, there is a problem starts. Then every problem will begin from that. Now, I want to go into what all the problems of likes and dislikes, attachments and all that. Understood is you are familiar with all those ideas by now. So we say first, he says, by explaining, by understanding, by probing into what is real, what is understood, what is expected out of understanding what is unreal, you are supposed to negate that unreal. Whatever you have concluded as unreal, doesn't matter what you conclude as unreal. You investigate and conclude something to be unreal. And once you have concluded something to be unreal, automatic effect of that is going to be what? Negating that part of it. So first thing you investigate is the world and you negate the, the world. So because only two things you know. One is the world you know, next is the individual. So first you negate the world. Negating the world means all that pursuit. So once you leave the world, you turn introvert and you encounter this. And why you are not able to turn and look within? Because of your involvement in the world. Why do you get involved in the world? That's visible, no? It's like that famous story, the Zen story of this old lady searching for a needle in the street light. She's searching for the needle in the street light. When she has asked, she says, I lost the needle in the hut. But unfortunately, there is no light inside the hut. There is light only in the street. Therefore, I am searching in the street. You have to find out. You have to locate what you have lost. The place where you have lost. You cannot search for the lost thing anywhere else. You have lost and you are searching. Now, as long as you believe, as long as that human were to believe that the happiness, contentment, joy, fulfillment, all coming from the world, he has no choice but to search for all that in the world. So what are what is it that you are what is it that you are negating? You are having the courage to question that first. What is that you question? Does the world have the power to give me what I am searching for? Does the relationships have the power to give me what I am seeking? through that relationship. You are seeking a relationship, correct? Family. But that doesn't mean throw your you know, family out, please. Immediately we will go to the other extreme. It's not that, please. In and through the relationship, you are searching for something. You are looking for something. Now you have to have the courage to investigate can it give that? When this name, fame, power, position, status, all these things, when it is not able to give, what is it that you are seeking? I am seeking through name something. Through fame, I am seeking something. Through happiness, I am seeking something. Remember. I'm seeking happiness, sir. Even happiness, joy. What are you seeking? 
you are seeking that infinite. Till you hit that infinite, you will not be discontented. Can the world give you that infinite happiness? Infinite power? Because anything that you seek, you are seeking to infinity, isn't it? I want love. How much love you want? You ask the brother, immediately he says, I want infinite love. I want wealth. How much wealth you want? Infinite wealth. I want health. How much health you want? Infinite health. See, I should never get old. 75 also, my hair should look black. Not die in earth. See, at 75 also, it should look black. Means what? Coloring is going on. That's all it is. Now, why can't you just accept the fact that when you grow old, you will lose hair? As for what is it? Now we have started doing this transplant. We have started plucking, you know, planting. Like plantation, I have seen only in the field. Now, head also you have to plant. And he should look. Why do you have to do all that? Because you can't digest the fact that you are getting old. Your body is losing. You can't digest. Share market is dropping, sir. Why? You can't digest. When something goes up, the law of nature is what? It should come down. No? It should never come down. It should keep on growing. How? This is what the problem is. All that you are seeking is this infant, that's what he gave in the first topic here. Purnamada, Purnamidam. What are you seeking? Nah, you are seeking that infinite wholeness, completeness. What are you seeking? You are seeking that Purnatva. The wholeness is what you are seeking. But you are seeking in a place where it has no capacity to give that to you. Now what are you supposed to do? You should have the courage to reject that and take a U-turn and move in a direction where here comes the catch. The only authority on which you can take a U-turn is on the authority of the scriptures. That's it. You cannot infer you cannot see. Nothing can be done. It is not there. One thing you are so sure about is it is not there. The surety that you have, the conviction that you have that it is not there in the world, you turn introvert. That's what he says. Once you turn introvert, the first thing you will encounter is the body. So, you will seek the whole thing from the body, means the senses. Then what are you supposed to do, sir? Reject the senses also and go beyond. Next one you encounter is the prana. This is the panchakosha viveka. One by one you negate. When you negate the annam world, you come to body. Assert the body. Is the world important or the body important? Body is of a greater value than the world. You drive a bike, you fall down. The person who comes and asks you, 
when you got hurt is more loving to you than a fellow asking what happened to the bike isn't it imagine your mother will ask okay to put it in a dramatic way your mother will ask what happened to you your father will ask what happened to the bike isn't it not always eh? i am just giving an example that uh, it's about it who you think lo- is loving you more why because body is of a greater value than the world then all that you have acquired then we say what what is greater than the body what is greater than the body is the mind what is the proof if i pinpoint a blemish on your body you will say thank you isn't it say hey, there is something on your cheek what is that you say oh i'm sorry you wipe it and say thanks man and you walk suppose if i tell you there is a blemish on your mind what happens you will file a file a case on me isn't it so is body more valuable to you or mind more valuable to you which is closer to you isn't it mind is far more closer to you so what happens you negate the body assert the mind then what we say is even mind is also not closer to you right you go one step beyond what is that in every relationship we say there is a problem sir there is so much of friction now we have in all relationships it's now between parents and you know children husband and wife friends everywhere friction if you see the root cause of most of those frictions is not lack of affection lack of concern lack of emotion what is it now lack of respect isn't it that's why nowadays we have started addressing even our own kids in a respectable language the typical all the celebrities they do you know diwali interview they give no you see the celebrities and all you know they ask how is your son how is your daughter and the fellow says avarku in tamil avar means you know his honorable something like that you know his respectable what is the age of that fellow na 3 and a half year old the 3 and a half year old kid in the house you are referring to that kid as what i'm not saying you should talk to him in a disrespectful way see is affection or respect between the two which one you will want there will be a lot of affection but there there is no there will not be any respect what will happen so respect is there affection is not there we will say what give me respect first give me respect then we will talk about affection no matter who we are what is respect sir na intellectual so wealth between wealth and body reject the wealth assert the body between body mind negate the body assert mind then between mind and intellect negate the mind assert the intellect then comes intellect and you which is important 
Now, after this, it becomes hazy, okay? Up to this, it becomes very easy for us to follow. Now, when I say intellect and you, we'll be thinking, what? What is intellect and me? Because your problem is, you are being conditioned to believe you are that intellect. You are that mind. You are the body. See? This process of negation assertion comes at this point. All that earlier is a preparatory one. You have already done that. Whatever I explained so far, all that has been completed by you even before studying this process of negation and assertion. Now, the scriptural assistance with which we have to do this, this is, is done only after you are having the courage to negate the intellect and search for something else. Although, almost impossible to do for, for us. But he is expecting here that we are supposed to do all this. Why you are negating it? You are not negating it because you hate it. Not in that sense, please. You are negating it because the world, the body, the mind, the intellect cannot provide what you are seeking. It cannot be found there. So for you to get it, you have to transcend the world. So you are not negating because you are frustrated with it or you are irritated with it. You are, you are, you are bothered by it. That, that, that's not the meaning, please. Because most of us will say, negating, sir. No, 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 no. We are willing to say no in the areas where we are pained, where we get irritated. Now, a seeker is not irritated by the world, remember. Seeker is not bothered by the world. No. His life is complete. His life is full of fun. Maja life he is living. But he says, what I am seeking is not there. So we are not able to Therefore, negation here, when he says, you are negating it, why? Not out of irritation, pain, bothered, frustrated, not because of that. Then why, sir? What I want, what I am seeking, this cannot provide. Therefore, you negate, you move out. This is the process he gives. This is the technique given by the Upanishads. Now, when you move out, does it mean you lose everything, please? Immediately he'll say, you lose, you know, you'll move out. Now, you, sir, I will lose all that, is it? Will I lose my body? Will I lose all the pleasures of the world? Nothing of that sort, please. You will lose what? You will lose only what you imagined that the world is going to offer. You will get whatever world can offer to you. That you will have. But what you have imagined that the world is going to offer to you, that only you will lose. Because you understand what I imagine the world is capable of giving me, now, upon investigation, I have understood it cannot. So, this is the process of again, you know, negation and assertion. That's why he says the infatuation to the phenomenal world. You do away with it. Why are you getting infatuated with this? Because of... So, then what you have to do? You have to realize here you have no other option but to take the authority of the knowledge. Only the knowledge can give you this thing of giving certain, by providing certain indicative definitions of Brahman, which he has already given you. 
So develop the courage to negate through investigation. And the proof of your proper investigation is you will negate automatically. And then you will say, now what, sir? I have already given you the points for you to assert. Start that assertion process. That's what he's giving here. So for that, he gives one good example of how you extract butter from milk. There is a proper process for it. Straight away, you cannot see milk. Similarly, straight away, you would not be able to see the truth, the divinity in the world. That is not possible. Even though the manifestations of Brahman, he has given us that the whole world that you are experiencing, you are seeing is Brahman, still you cannot see it. You have to extract out of it. That extraction needs a particular proper process. The process is first make the fluid milk to a solid curd. That is a primary proper process, first step. Secondary process is churning. If you churn the milk, what you will get? Have you tried? If you have not tried, you try tomorrow. Get milk, fresh milk, and in front of your wife, you sit and try to churn the milk. Okay. For the consequences, I am not responsible. Hmm. Why not? Nah? You will get only froth, that's all. Nothing will you will get. In fact, it will get spoiled. Milk will get spoiled. You will not get butter out of it. So first step is what? Warm the milk. Then add little curd. Stir it well. Leave it overnight. What happens now? That milk transforms automatically into curd. The process is automatic. If you do this, warm the milk, add curd, mix it well, leave it. Four steps. Same way you have to do here also. What does it with the experiences of life, your mind gets warmed up. With the warmed up mind, with the little experience of life, knowledge. When you expose the milk to fire, it warms up. No, same way. When you get exposed to the world, your mind gets warmed up. The warmed up mind you add little knowledge. And then that little knowledge should be mixed well. That mixing process is the investigation process I was telling you till now. The preliminary investigations. With that knowledge, along with the knowledge, you investigate. Without knowledge, if you go directly on investigations, you will get into cynicism and pessimism only you will get into. That's not what we refer here. You take little knowledge, that is the step called Shravana. The next step is called Manana. And then what you have to do? Keep quiet. Leave it. Don't do anything. What happens? Leave it overnight. Next day morning, you see this fluid milk has transformed into a solid curd. Your personality gets solidified. You are no longer fluid, which is called conviction. You have conviction now. When you have that conviction, you, you do this negation and assertion.
with this one line of thinking is over in the in the chapter chapter one direction of thinking is is done now what he is doing is to explain that supreme reality the truth is doing with two topics idea of trinity and the three schools of thought this is a different direction so the first one aspect of supreme reality he picked it up he explained and then concluded now he is moving in another way he says the idea of of this trinity it's a beautiful exposition in fact this idea of trinity is nothing but the entire 15th chapter of the gita this two pages he covers the 15th chapter in fact the 15th chapter itself is a very small chapter in the in the gita only 20 20 verses are there that's all called purushottam yoga right now he is giving that here now when we read these things remember you feel little uncomfortable right that little discomfort what we get we experience is not because you know uh, when somebody is attacking you or when somebody scolds you you feel uncomfortable no not in that sense please it's not that he is attacking you in fact when the master attacks you you will feel a joy you know that when the when the guru scolds the student takes that as prasad if he screams at you he takes that as maha prasad if you get a beatings that's called a maha prasad you know i have got lot of maha prasads so no. just a shot of saying pack your bags and leave that's all no just a shot no is maha prasad it is scolding we feel oh, wow joy actually speaking but when he starts speaking the truth start feeling very uncomfortable oh. in this portion you know this to this entire you know uh, this illusions supreme reality that the water is three chapters he speaks like a upanishadic master right suddenly he switches off go oh, to to decode and here you feel the flow effortless actually speaking you see there's a effortless flow eres you see same speaking in this introductory portion of the same book you feel struggling there's a stream you can experience i don't know how many of you see it but it's a stream or typically you you if you find you know the book you know governing business and relationships if you read that book and you read this portion Now, same author right governing business relationships and vedanta treatises you will see effortlessly he is able to move in these concepts when he is talking about leadership you will find a lot of strain no he is he is training himself to speak about leadership but trinity ela it looks so simple so easy for him. it's like remember no uh, ramesh krishnan and pete sampras 
Ramesh Krishnan won the match. After the match, they asked, what happened to you? Pete Sampra says, he serves. I go for return. Almost after my 60% of the return, only then the ball is coming. He can't play. Know that. If you see a good batsman, you know, a good batsman, when he is in form, how they get out? Hardly you will find them getting out for a good delivery. That's how they frustrate that batsman. By bowling, irritate that fellow. All that we could see, these things you can do in test cricket. 2020, la, you have no time for all that. You know, test cricket is the real one we say because that's where a bowler can. Actually, it is a batsman's game we say. Test cricket is actually bowlers. Because they set the batsman to a particular tempo, they guide that fellow to play a particular way. And if you see it, you see it. Otherwise, you can't get it. And to what ball they get out? A good delivery, they know how to play. You bowl a pathetic delivery. They go for a stroke and they get out. So that's why all that, that, that's why you know when a set batsman is there, they bring a fifth bowler. And invariably we find. There is a breakthrough. Why? Because he is a be better bowler than these fellows, is it? Huh? It's not like that. Why now? Because that rhythm, you know, suddenly this guy comes and bowls some weird delivery. Tundulkar has got, you know, five wickets. How? You can't predict whether he is going to bowl off spin or leg spin. You see, if Kumble is bowling, you know. If this fellow is bowling, you know. He is off spinner, he is a leg spinner, he is medium base, is this. No, this guy, you cannot decide anything about him. Kevin Peterson, Vivian Richards, all those, all those guys have bowled in critical matches and they have got the breakthroughs. How? This is the reason. Not because of anything. You play in your field, effortlessly you will go. He goes so effortlessly here. Let's see how effortlessly he is being here suddenly ideas and his ability to teach, ability to explain and all that. But when it comes to, you know, explaining, you know, uh, three gunas, caste system, and then, you know, love, kindness, all that that he's explaining, you find it so, it's so beautiful here. It's so poetic, so lyrical. You find this portion particular topic, the idea of Trinity. The offshoot of this Trinity concept is the three schools of thought. See, how this Trinity idea and this Trinity concept will automatically provide us a glimpse of what the three schools of thought. What is a Trinity? Sir? Trinity means Kshara, Akshara, Uttama Purusha. This is the three. Perishable, imperishable, beyond the perishable and imperishable. Supreme being. Uttama Purusha means supreme being. Same way, the three schools of thought means three schools of Vedanta. Dvaita, Vasishta Dvaita and Advaita. Don't say, you know, We'll make the link. Don't, you, you, you don't worry. I will establish it. When we, when we go there, I'll explain. 
I'm only giving the intro. So what is this idea here? The idea is, is this. First, you are introduced to God. How God is explained as Kshara. World is God. That we have seen already by in the topic manifestations of Brahman. What is the manifestations of Brahman? We saw the world that you are seeing is Brahman. Is what we have seen. Now what he is doing, what they do is this world and you put together, together is called world now. Macrocosm plus microcosm. Put together is the world. That world that you are experiencing is Brahman and the world is perishable. Therefore, you may come to thinking that Brahman is also perishable. When the world perishes, Brahman perishes. Immediately he comes and says, no, 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 no. Brahman is the essence of the world. Right. In the 15th chapter, he uses the word, you know, Kutastha, he says. Is the word he uses in the 15th chapter. Anvil. The goldsmith's anvil, no? On which they make all the goals. That is the truth. Then he says, no, 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 no. It is not even Akshara. It is not even the substratum. It's not even the essence that is Brahman. Brahman is beyond that also. This is the three ideas. Just you have to remember these three words. That's all he says. It's the entire portion is just an explanation of these three words, in fact. Right. Akshara, Akshara, Uttama Purusha. Why they have to go through this process? What is it is this thing? Now we ask the question, why they have to communicate in this fashion? Why do they speak the language of Trinity? Right. Why? Having said that, you remember the starting point. The starting point we have already stated. In fact, even in the introduction to the illusions itself, we have stated what is Sarna cannot be communicated. Correct. After saying something which cannot be communicated, which cannot be taught, what are they supposed to do? What are they supposed to do? The fellow comes and asks, sir, what is it? Say, I can't, you know, you can't understand all this. Then what will you do? Five-year-old child, six and a half year old comes and asks you, what is quantum mechanics? You tell him, you can't understand all that. After that, what do you do? You keep quiet. After saying, it cannot be communicated. See, it cannot be communicated either because I don't know or it could be the subject is difficult or you are not qualified. It doesn't matter. There can be three reasons. One reason is, I myself don't know. Okay. Or, you are not capable. You are not qualified. Three, the subject itself is not possible to be communicated. In all the three cases, what are we supposed to do? Quietly go, no. After saying it cannot be communicated, their communication starts. The entire gamut of Upanishads, the scriptural teachings that you have, all the scriptures, Prasthanatraya, this, that, anything you can say. All the texts, they're explaining thousands and thousands of verses were spent. Communicating what now? 
even though through the instruments it is not possible to be communicated even though the instruments that we are using to communicate the instrument that i am using to communicate is what buddhi the instrument that you are using to absorb it is what buddhi the instruments cannot understand what that reality is right then what are we doing see then how do you communicate does it mean you should not communicate no the attempt after knowing fully well that it cannot be communicated you blow your lungs out to communicate why that is called the compassion knowing fully well right it cannot be communicated it is beyond communication because the i am not qualified because the equipment that i am going to use to communicate is the buddhi it cannot the instrument that you are bringing in to understand is also buddhi which cannot and the subject is also beyond buddhi therefore it cannot be communicated but still i am attempting to communicate it to you why this gurus this masters they try to communicate then how do you get it if you cannot get it through seeing god they can't bring god and show you that's not possible nor can they communicate it through buddhi through intellect through inference it is not possible then what is the means through which you are going to gain this knowledge there is only one means there is only one all our knowledge we have so far all this is only through two things either through senses or through intellect mind and intellect in fact intellect strictly speaking it is only intellect it is intellect that gains the knowledge or you gain the knowledge through the senses which is what we refer to as pratyaksha pramana and anumana pramana right pratyaksha is direct perception anumana is inference upamana is also part of anumana only actually speaking strictly speaking there are so many things you know i am amalgamating all that in fact in vedanta we give, we say there are six we say six things we use is the all possibility all possible knowledge the way you can gain knowledge is through six means is what we accept in vedanta there are different schools different people accept different different numbers there is a school which will accept only if it is perception that's it no other thing and there are schools which i take to 10 pramanas now there are people who take to four pramanas there are people who take to two pramanas so like that each one have their own you know in vedanta we take six i am just you know for for reasoning purpose it's easy to process our thoughts for that time amalgamating the four things into one artapatti anupalabdhi anumana and upamana put together because all this is processed by buddhi intellect intellect is that which processes all that so i am amalgamating all that into one pratyaksha is direct perception you see you hear you smell you taste you touch you get it now can you gain the knowledge of brahman using any one of this 
ప్రత్యక్ష నాట్ పాసిబుల్ అనుమాన నాట్ పాసిబుల్ ఉపమాన నాట్ పాసిబుల్ అర్థాబద్ధి నాట్ పాసిబుల్ అనుపలబ్ధి నాట్ పాసిబుల్ అండ్ దిస్ అర్థాబద్ధి అనుపలబ్ధి అల్ల వి జనరలీ ఇన్క్లూడ్ దట్ ఇన్ అనుమాన దట్స్ వి జనరలీ కాల్ యాజ్ ఓన్లీ ఫోర్ ఫోర్ మీన్స్ ఆఫ్ గెయినింగ్ నాలెడ్జ్ now i'm adding upamana also into that and then making it into one so you have equipments for knowledge gaining knowledge you have two equipments in you what is it now senses are there buddhi is there with senses you cannot with buddhi you cannot then how do you get you have to go only by that శబ్ద ప్రమాణ దర్ ఇస్ నో అదర్ ఆప్షన్ మార్క్ దిస్ ఇస్ వెరీ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఫార్ వీ టు ప్రాసెస్ ద రెస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఇట్ దిస్ ఆర్ ఆల్ ప్రిలిమినరీ ఐ ఎమ్ జస్ట్ గివింగ్ యూ అంట్రొడక్షన్ టు ద టాపిక్ ఐడియా ఆఫ్ ట్రినిటీ రైట్ ఫస్ట్ థింగ్ వాట్ వీ హ్యావ్ డన్ సో ఫార్ ఇస్ వీ హ్యావ్ రిజెక్టెడ్ ది possibility of gaining knowledge of brahman truth reality through these means what by senses it is not possible by intellect it is not possible senses means mind included in that understood when i said senses sir where is mind you know mind is included in the senses so when you say senses registering naka it is mind that is registering because mind is the king of the senses he is the one he is the boss so through senses means through indriyas through mind so through mind you cannot through intellect you cannot intellect gets how intellect gets knowledge through the means of inference through the means of comparison and then you have another two things also you can add you compare you understand you infer you understand now these methods cannot give you the knowledge of brahman then how do you get the knowledge of brahman where do you go for which we ask the fundamental quick quiz question sir why should i go and search for brahman itself hmm? isn't it now because of your vedanta class only i am talking about brahman if i am not attending vedanta class your neighbor is not attending vedanta class no correct even my neighbor also correct he is not seeking brahman truth reality and all that he is understanding of truth to speak the truth more than that he doesn't know right he is not seeking then why do you have why are you breaking your head man with all this all this inquiries we ask this fundamental question question is okay what is the knowledge that you gain through senses and buddhi all that you can understand from the world any knowledge that you can get all that is known to us we get the knowledge of what world is proving to us day in and day out something to all of us without any exception this is sanatana dharma remember universal truth what is it all 
all of us were proved time and again how limited you are, how constrained you are, how restricted you are, how constricted you are, how bound you are. Isn't it? All of us, time and again, world, your, your senses and your buddhi is proving to you again and again and again. You inquire, you find out only one thing. What is it, sir? Na? I am bound. Correct? Hmm? Is there any idea that you have is there any clue the world gives to you that you are not bound? Any experience of yours? Hmm? The question comes is, if world has never given a clue to any one of us, huh? from where did we get this idea of Liberation. Isn't it? See, if you say, there has to be a clue, no, from the world to say, yes, man, there is a possibility for liberation. Isn't it? World is proving again and again and again, you are bound, you are bound, you are bound, you are bound, you are bound. You are bound. If that is the truth, who planted this thought, this notion, this possibility of liberation and all of us seeking liberation in the world, which is again and again proving to us that you are bound? You see that? From where we get that notion? Death is a reality. Then, from where did you get the notion of immortality? Huh? Have you seen that? All this Rakshasas, when they do tapas, when they do tapas, first question, well, when Brahma appears, what is the first thing they ask him? Grant me immortality. When you know death is the absolute certainty, if at all there is something certain, they say, your death is the certainty. And that we have seen to everyone. It's not, not, not a single exception. When we say, there's not a single exception from where we got the notion of immortality. How can you get it? You see that? This notion has a source which is beyond all that is inferred and perceived. This notion, you can never say through inference I got it, sir. Through perception I got it, sir. But this notion, this desire, this idea exists in all humans. Not a single human is an exception to it. From where you are getting it? You are getting that notion from some source. That source which is beyond your senses and buddhi. Your Indriyas and Buddhi. Indriya, Manas, Buddhi. Those who have tapped there, they tell you, those who have access to that source, whatever they say becomes the authority. That is the scripture. That is the knowledge. That is that Vedanta. So Vedanta is the source for it. He is an independent authority. The scriptures becomes an independent authority beyond what? Your senses and intellect. 
So you can't use your inferential things here. They say it is. You have to take it by that authority only. You cannot cross verify this. There we understand. What is it? My instruments. What is the instrument that I have? The instruments that I have is not capable of reaching there. So therefore, if my instruments are not capable, not only my instruments, all instruments, then such a thing can it exist only? We'll say it cannot exist because if it exists, someone would have understood. No, sir, E is equal to mg square. I can't understand, but Einstein can understand. No, isn't it? I cannot understand, but he can understand, right? Even if one buddhi can conceive, if one buddhi is capable, then Buddhi is capable. It's only a question of training. That, uh, that's about it. If one intellect can conceive it, one intellect can do it, it is now, this is beyond all intellect. Therefore, on what authority we are going to discuss about Trinity? There is Kshara, Akshara and Uttama Purusha. That Uttama Purusha is the, will be the pro 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 problem. Kshara Akshara will not be any issue actually speaking. Because Kshara Akshara will be falling in the category of the intellect. Up to Kshara and Akshara, intellect can travel. Suddenly when they take a jump to Uttama Purusha, gone case. You see that? Akshara, Akshara, Uttama Purusha. That is the Trinity. We will read in the next class and then I will explain. What is that Akshara, Akshara, Uttama Purusha. Okay. See you. See you.